Hi, I'm Danger Dan Jers, the host and GM of the D&D Real Play podcast, d and Dark. Join us on Wednesdays for an absurd, over-the-top comedy horror adventure starring some of history's most infamous monsters. I'm Ben Magnet. I play Mary Frankenstein, our barbarian. I am Daniel Cruz. I am playing Imhotep the Mummy, our cleric. I'm Jordan, and I play Larry Talbot, a lycanthropic warlock. I am Grayson, playing Jack Griffin, the Invisible Man, the party's rogue. I am Aaron. I play the Phantom of the Opera, our bard. For more information, go to dndarkpodcast.com and listen to us anywhere you find podcasts. Hey everybody, this is Davis over at CFG, and I would like to welcome you to another episode of Pop Culture Gems. This is a series where we talk to amazing creators, artists, cosplayers, voice actors, and so much more. If you like the interviews we do with these amazing guests, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel, the CFG channel, or you can either go to our main website, confreaksandgeeks.com, or listen to it on any podcast services out there. Today, my con is an I or my guest is an I icon in the voice acting world with over 600 credits to his name he has done it all you may have grown up with his voice without even knowing it but some of the incredible roles he is in are jigen from lupin the third bato from ghost in the shell the joker as well as the lightning god himself riding in injustice and in the mortal kombat series the recent mortal kombat series uh and some in Kingdom Hearts, Akuma in SF5, Joseph Joestar in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and so many, many more. We literally would be here all day. I would <laughs> I would like to welcome Richard Epcar to the show. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Great. Thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs> I think we should sit here and we should sit here and name each and every character that I've ever done. I think that would be great. If we can get like uh what's the name? <laughs> like Paulson and do like his Yakko impersonation of the world, like all the countries of the world. That's exactly what you deserve that <laughs> at this point, you know, that, that's what, yeah, that's what great. it would be. I love Rob. He's a good, good man. <laughs> Very good man. man. But no, it's great. I'm really glad to have you here. It was really Thank awesome. You. I would love to get out with you today. So let's, get this uh let's get this started uh all so right. amongst like being also an actor director producer uh i mean you've been in voice acting for a long time uh for a good a good time initially what brought you into the world of voice acting uh like early in your career well i originally came to los angeles to be an on camera actor which i did a lot of that i did a lot of soaps and tv shows and that sort of thing <clears throat> and uh I was in a, uh, a repertory theater company, and I met my wife, Ellen Stern, and she was uh, had a lead in a, in a film that she was doing, and uh, the people who were doing that film had another film that they wanted to uh, replace uh, the voices on, and she said, can I bring my boyfriend? Now, this is a long, long time ago, but can I bring my boyfriend with me, who was me at the time, and uh, uh, they said, sure. And the guy said, have you ever done this before? I said, oh, I've done it a million times. I never did it before in my life. And I went in and I was, uh, what it was, was dubbing for a live action film. They were replacing the voices of the actors. So they liked me for the lead guy. And I booked that. And this company uh, really liked what I did. And I took to it like a duck to water because I'm also a drummer and there's a lot of rhythm to dubbing. So uh, I got that job and then they had me come in for a bunch of other jobs and I just worked constantly. And from that job, I got uh, a part in Robotech, which uh, was the one of the first uh, animes that was on network television. And uh, excuse me, we uh, we did that show and, uh, I, you know, I never thought anything would come up from it, but it just blew up. And I, I after that, I just worked constantly and I've never stopped working since and I've just been doing uh, you know, every day, almost every day I have a voice job. It's been, it's been insane and uh, it gets better every year. You would think it would be winding down, but it's getting more and more crazy. So, uh, well, I mean, I, I'm just amazed because like, it's actually kind of great to like, I love the fact that you're here because like, I don't usually talk to people who started voice acting, like, like basically in the eighties. So, I mean, like it's a, it's a good, a good back in the stone age, <laughs> yeah, back in the stone age when, before we had fire. 
<laughs> that's exactly it because like you're like you're saying robotech was one of the first uh dub or uh, like animes uh, animes that legitimately came to the states seriously yeah. you know yeah uh, but l- yeah but like i'm just like surprised like how far we have come from there from then to like what it is today and it's yeah, just it's, it's, there's so much content and then uh you know my wife and i are being hired by a lot of these companies to direct a lot of these live action shows for Netflix and uh, the other, you know, some of these other places, HBO and and uh, Paramount Plus, some of these other companies are hiring us to direct a lot of the dubs of these uh, these uh, foreign films into English, which we've been doing for years and years and as well. And we've done a lot of Academy Award winning films and that sort of thing as well. So we've been doing all this stuff a long time. And in fact, I, I was a uh, supervisor for DreamWorks. I went all over the world and supervise different uh, our movies into other languages. And that was a really fun gig. I did that for, for almost two years and, and went all over the world and uh, had a, had a ball doing that. <laughs> you didn't just voice it, man. You just, you just been, were a person with many hats. My goodness. Yes, I do have a lot of hats. That's true. That's true. That's very true. You know, it's funny. It's kind of weird. I have a weird memory because I'm like, I don't know what it is, but I, for some reason there was a movie or I don't know what, it, I don't remember what it was, but it, you look like the guy from like a movie I saw with Scott Bio or something that you threw like from like Charles in Charge <laughs> like, I, just I threw actually, him into a pool. I threw Scott Bio into the pool. Yeah, we were. Uh, that was, was that you? Uh, yeah, it was me. That was me. <laughs> yeah, I, okay. I told you I did a lot of television when I first came out, and uh, that was one of my one of the jobs that I did, and uh, that was on uh, uh, Diagnosis Murder. Uh, oh, I, Dick I Van Dyke. Was, I was Dick Van Dyke. I worked with him many times. I was on that show four or five times, actually, as a different characters. And uh, this uh, uh, one guy, he he was trying to, I guess Scott Bayo was trying to find something out about uh, somebody. And he came and asked my wife. And uh, my wife's going, this guy's bothering me. And so I throw him in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you were, you were like, look like you were nine feet tall. <laughs> like, well, you just I am like- nine feet tall. So there, yeah, <laughs> I got all the nine feet tall uh, roles. So I played all those. <laughs> yeah. And that's why actually I was in a movie called Memoirs of an Invisible Man with Chevy Chase and Daryl Hannah and Sam Neill. And mm. one of the reasons I think I got that part was because they wanted uh, someone to look intimidating next to Daryl Hannah because Daryl Hannah's a very tall girl. She's she's either almost six foot or six foot tall. She's oh, wow. a very tall girl. So um, uh, they wanted somebody to kind of look uh, bigger next to her. Wow. So that, that was one of I think that was one of the reasons I got that part. It must have been really tricky to find someone really t- t- to overtower. Her, but that's yeah, that well, she's so cool. a tall guy too. So he 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 worked out well with her too. But yeah, that was that was one of the funnest experiences I've ever had uh, doing anything. And we got uh, we shot on that for I was on it for 10, 11 weeks and we shot uh, a couple of weeks in San Francisco and shot a bunch of stuff here at Warner Brothers at the back lot there at, at stage 16. And it was great. That was really great. <laughs> that sounds so awesome. In your own view, like uh, how much has voice acting evolved from when you started doing it to to now to the present? Uh, it's 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 grown leaps and bounds. It really has. I mean, um, I, I think it's gotten so much better. If you look at some of the old stuff, it just sounds really kind of stilted and weird. But uh, you know, because everyone's really trying to hit the uh, lip sync, which is we, we still do that. I mean, we still try to make it, but now we try to make it a little more natural and there's a lot of, uh, tools to help us now. There's pro tools, as we were talking about earlier, which you can shift the lines left or right. You can expand them. You can contract them to make them fit the, the lip flaps and you can do a lot of stuff with it and just cut it up and do all kinds of things that you, we couldn't do when we started out. Uh, well, when we started out, it's what I like to call it uh, combat dubbing. Because uh, basically we had a script and it had the time code burned onto the film and the time code was on the script. And you had to look at the screen and grab the line as it was coming. Now we have beeps, which beep you in. There's three beeps that go boop, boop, boop. And then on the fourth imaginary beep is when the line actually starts. So you don't even have to think about that stuff anymore. But when I first started out, you really had to... uh, had to watch the screen and really try to get it in there. And we would go back and forth, you know, as many times as we had to in order to make it uh, fit into the mouth flaps of the character you were dubbing. So that was not easy. In the, well, yeah, like I said, like in the 80s, like, like uh, you know, iconic films back in the day, Akira, 
was one of the yeah. it was such a great film but man i could not listen to it uh, because of yeah, how uh, of how like either there's fast motions uh, i guess it's another thing because like translation wise was there much trend like that went into the translations the direct translations from japanese to, to english because some of it seems like they were tr- they were saying paragraphs in f- like but they want you to be talking 10 times fast so it all fits in in the same well in the same in the uh, same movies link, like you know? akira you know and i hate to say it but a lot of times when uh the the big studios get these movies they don't really know what to do with them because their dubbing is not their forte really let's face it uh and you have sound people working on these things that it really they did not know lip sync and they did not know how to do that stuff so they did the best uh you know rendition of it i guess they could at the time but they they really should have gotten people like myself uh who do this stuff all the time and really know how this stuff works um, and you know, a lot of these, these big movies that were at the, uh, the, the major studios, they don't look so great because they're, you know, <laughs> they're, they're just not, they're done by people that just don't understand lip sync and, uh, how to make it work and how to make it look like English. When I do it, I, I hope to, to get it to the point where when you're watching it as a viewer, you forget it's a dub, you're watching a dub thing and you just get into the story and you right. forget about it being dubbed. And if, if you do that, then I've done my job. Yeah, that's very true. You and yes, you have done your job with over like the 600, 600 roles and counting. Um, you've done several types of characters. Uh, yeah. like what is the weirdest role that you could remember that you've done? Like, I mean, we could like, or more like, like you, we, we see you like we're, we're on the subway or we're in a taxi or somewhere and we're like, oh, why is Richard Epcard talking to us like ra- randomly? Like, was there any of those kind oh, of there, like, there's been a lot ones? of them. I, I'm trying to remember some, uh, sadly, I can't really remember any of them, but uh, there's been some weird ones. Um, you know, as far as being weird characters, there's a, there was a show called monster that I did a few years ago. And, uh, Oh yeah, that's a great uh, Inspector Lunge is a very strange character and he was a really lot, a lot of fun to play him. Uh, there was another character, uh, uh, Ziggy, uh, Ziggurat Eight, uh, Ziggy and Xenosaga, which is oh, a game. Xenosaga. Yeah, and with the that was a, he was a really fun, bizarre character, but really fun to play. And uh, you know, I've been listen, I've been very, very lucky. Uh, I've got to play some, uh, you know, hundreds of characters, a lot of really fun characters, iconic characters like the Joker. It doesn't get more iconic than that. And uh, you know, I've been very, very fortunate to to play all those kinds of characters and. Like I say, I, I've got a lot more stuff coming up, and uh, we'll see what happens. I I, I just uh, finished working on this thing um, called uh, Dixon Mason, which was really cool. It's an original animated uh, series. It's a noir animation, and it looks very cool. And I play a, a private eye in it, and it's like oh. the old, uh, you know, the old kind of uh, detective uh, kind of things where the the beautiful woman comes in and asks for help from the detective and all that kind of stuff. So it's really cool. And I hope we, I hope we get a series out of it because it's just a super cool uh, uh, show. And there's been a few little things like that. I I kind of enjoy these, these, these little one-off things that I get every once in a while that are not from the big, you know, I listen, I love the big jobs. Don't get me wrong. And I'm not trying to (laughs) say I don't, but every once in a while you get these little, you know, these little projects that are made by people that are, you know, made with love and they really, you know, want to get their stuff out. And those are a lot of fun. Do you prefer, I mean, I'm not, like I said, not, not saying any knock at any of the big, the big roles or anything like that, but do you prefer like the weird, uh, like the far-fetched character over, you know, the, the regular, uh, like the regular, you know, the kind of, simple characters because like, like you said like professor like the dude from monster was an incredibly odd character <laughs> yes he was <laughs> and you know, they're, they're fun they're you know they're fun uh and i and i do like the characters that are close to me uh, you know it just it just depends you know honestly i like i like doing shows that are well written and i like doing characters that i can just really sink my teeth into as an actor uh you know uh there's a lot of times you get you know called in to do you know jobs and the director has a very, uh, uh, you know, succinct idea of what he wants that character to be. And sometimes I don't always agree with, you know, what he wants to do, but I I'm hired as the actor and I'm supposed to, you know, produce for him. So, uh, I will, uh, I will create that, uh, character that he wants, but, uh, that's not always gratifying to me as an actor, to me as an actor, it's always fun to kind of, uh, do it as a, uh, you know, uh, do it together. You, 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 you 
collaborate on a, on a character. And, uh, and that's always fun to do with a director is create something that's unique and fun. Um, there is fun. There is one, I, uh, one story, cause we're talking about this stuff. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it now. Uh, uh, it was called, uh, I believe it was called Slade techno man. It was called techno man. Oh yes. Do, do yes. You remember that show techno man? I do remember that. Yes. Well, well I played, uh, ax and, uh, Mac now Mac, when they first hired me to do that part, uh, I had auditioned doing kind of a real gruff, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, he, he's kind of like the Scotty of the ship. And then for some reason, I just started doing Sean Connery all of a sudden, and they loved it. So what happened was Mac became Scottish, which was perfect. It was like Scotty on Star Trek because it was kind of a Star Trek-ish kind of a show. Mm-hmm. And then it was funny. I, I mentioned to you earlier that I, I was uh, supervising for DreamWorks, so I happened to be in Germany, and that show happened to come on the TV, and the German guy came on. And he's doing uh, Mac with a Scottish accent. And I thought, that's fucking crazy. Now, the reason that happens is because when uh, we dub stuff here in, in, in the U.S., mm-hmm. uh, we do it into English. They take, uh, it's called figs. There's uh, uh, France, Italy, uh, uh, Germany, and Spain. They're, they're, those are the four major co- uh, countries that dub everything. They dub everything. So they have huge, like we have big movie production studios they have big dubbing houses there so they dub everything so they get our scripts because we're time coded and it's written in english and it's easier to adapt from our stuff than it is to take the original stuff and try to adapt it to that because we've already done the The grunt work work, you know yeah so uh but so it was interesting he heard my character with a scottish accent and they thought well this character has to have a scottish accent so the the actor put a scottish accent on so that i i i got a I got a chuckle out of that because here's a guy doing a German with a Scottish accent. I thought that was, hilarious. I would love to hear how a German <laughs> with a Scottish accent would sound. That just sounds interesting. It's like, well, the, the I, weird, the weirdest thing was, was when I was in Germany and I would go to these Chinese restaurants, you know, Chinese food restaurants and the Chinese girls would speak German. That like blew my mind. You know, you just, <laughs> wow. you just don't expect that at all. I don't know why. I mean, <laughs> no, I, I totally understand. Like, just, uh, one of my, uh, one of my, uh, uh, what was one of my bands? Uh, one of the bands I like to listen to, uh, uh, uh who did through the fire and flames dragon force, like uh-huh. their, their, uh, their lead guitarist, Herman Lee is a really good guitarist, uh, uh, and completely, uh, he's a- a- Asian, but he has a European accent and it just, uh-huh. every time that he talks to me, I'm like, or when he talks, I'm like, I never get, I'm never ready. It's like, it's like, oh, here we go. I need to uh, self adjust. It's, it it's, really it's incongruous. It seems. Yeah, I know, but it's, <laughs> it's really not, but it just, you're not used to it. So it just seems a, yeah. a little off, but it, that really kind of blew me away. <laughs> very interesting and i mean at this point in your career um is there a role out there that you would love to like that, that's out there that you would like to play james bond of course <laughs> and uh, batman i'd love to do a thing where i could do batman and the joker together because i do raiden and then the joker together and everyone you know no one knows it's the same guy or some people do but they don't know it you know it's funny <laughs> even the guys at the nether realm uh i met with them i was doing a, a convention in chicago that's where nether realm is based <clears throat> and he said uh He said, I want to bring you to uh, the studio. He said, because there's people still there that don't believe that the the one guy does the voice of the Joker and Raiden. They can't believe that. And I've been doing this for 12 years now. So, (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Really? Dang. Have, have you, you've never been to, so you haven't been to another realm studios I like at all. I, or? I'm, I'm dying to uh, get another convention in Chicago. I wish they would invite me back because mm-hmm. I'd love to go there, and I will definitely make room out the back end of the uh, hey, when I'm done with the con and go see because I really would love to go there and meet those guys. They are super talented, and you know, talk about I, I mentioned earlier. I like to do really well written scripts. These guys. Mm-hmm. They, their writing is phenomenal. I mean, they're like, they're all like movie scripts. They're really, really well done. And, uh, they just do a great job and I'd love to meet those guys. I introduced, like, I think, uh, I was introduced to your, like, I mean, like, I believe when you went into the Mortal Kombat series and I'm not counting, um, Mortal Kombat versus DC universe. I think that was kind of like a special in itself, Yeah, uh-huh. but like, uh, 
like when you were introduced in the Mortal Kombat series was nine, right? Like through the regular, the regular number, right? Like, I, uh, I, I believe so. Well, actually I did Mortal Kombat versus DC universe. That was uh-huh. the first one I did. That was the very first and that one. That was yeah. the first one that cast me as Raiden and the Joker. And they were both in that. So I was uh, for the DC side. I was the Joker and for Mortal Kombat, I was Raiden. And then they continued to bring me in for the, uh, the shows. And then, uh, when then we did, uh, injustice gods among us, uh, I did the Joker in that, and then they did. Uh, they brought in Raiden as a guest star. Oh, so, that DLC was, character. <laughs> so that was yeah, that was pretty cool. They brought in Raiden, and then when they did Mortal Kombat, uh, I was doing Raiden, and they brought in the Joker as a special guest star. So, so that was uh, pretty cool. I got to uh, I got to be in uh, you know. I got to crazy. Go, go back and forth on those. So that was really yeah. great. Yeah. I love yeah, you. It. I mean, like you were saying with Netherrealm though, like they're they're they, they do take their scripts pretty seriously. Cause I believe they connected yeah. like nine, 10 and 11 all together as one gigantic oh, yeah, story. Yeah. 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 You know? They're amazing. And you're the focal point of most of that story, which is I even know. crazy. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> I, I, it's fantastic. It really is. And like I say, the writing is just incredible. I love it. I, I my only, my only wish is I wish they would have spent a little more time on dark Raiden. Cause he's, he, he was interesting. Yeah. And I, I think they could have gone a little farther with him and, you know, have him really create some, some havoc there, but uh, you know, they, for they rain to go just, evil would be amazing i would definitely like like so th- at the beginning of 11 i would love to have seen him just not care you know yeah <laughs> yeah like, exactly <laughs> yeah but he's, he's like, you know i call him i call him he's the the quintessential dad you know he really is he's like he's always giving everybody advice and telling everybody what they should do and you know he's just he's he's a really uh he's a very noble and honorable character and I, I love playing him. he's one of my all-time favorite characters i just love him to death technically but, though uh, it's, it's like most of it, it's funny because like actually i've talked to people about that and they're like saying that like when they played the story mode of, of mortal Kombat, they're like blaming raiden for half of what has happened because i know everything that, that went, went down i'm just like well, i i don't even understand but i can understand I know. him being like when he flips and he decides to go dark raiden i was like thinking okay that's that's his turning point that's when he just says you know what Stop blaming me. I'm just going to take care of every, I'll just take care of it myself and just with just a vengeance. But yes. no, they didn't go that way. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I wish they had done a little bit of that. That would have been fun. <laughs> that would have been real fun. In the well, maybe I'll come back. It'll be dark raiding again. Who knows? You know? Oh yeah. Let's cross our fingers. So let's give it All that. Right. <laughs> All right. And uh, like, uh, what's your, and uh, I mean, you yourself, like, uh, do you have like, like, do you have a personal fandom, like comic comics, books, gaming? Like, what is it that you like? James to- Bond. Uh, we talked about that. James Bond is my, yeah. I love James Bond. You know, it's weird. Like, like, uh, would do you think we would ever see a day of an american actor playing playing a uh, playing that character that role i don't see why not to be honest with you because we have incredible actors in america and listen they have incredible actors in in england too but it, it kind of irks me a little bit that they they always feel okay about letting the english guys play americans but they have a real problem with americans playing english and there are guys that have flawless english accents just like there's english guys that have flawless american accents you know it's acting it's called acting you know <laughs> just because you're playing a murderer doesn't mean you have to be a murderer you know what i mean so uh i i think that uh i think that uh they should allow it they i mean they did consider it and i think this would have been a horrible choice but uh you know they they did do a a, a screen test for james brolin at one point when connery was quitting and that would have been Oh, I think wow. a disaster. And also, oh, uh, so this is like a young James Brolin. So that would yeah, have been very young. Yeah, it was very young. It was around the time Connery was wanted to quit. And, uh, you know, it's not that he, it's not that he can't look the part, I guess, but you know, I don't, I don't think he would be right for that character at all. But, uh, you know, obviously James Bond is English. So he, he whoever mm-hmm. plays him has got to have an English accent, you know? So, but it doesn't yeah, mean but like you're saying, it's like acting, but like, I've never seen, like, I like, for some reason it's weird because like, to me, like, I don't know, maybe it's, I, I've been conditioned because like James, every James Bond character was always British. Like it was always been, been a British, uh, a, Br- a British actor. But like it, it, to me, it just seemed well, like George I don't think I'll ever was see Australian. It. Oh yeah, that's true. But how, how many movies I, did think, he I have? actually think I think uh, Chris Hems, Hemsworth would be a great James Bond. To be honest with you, I think he would be a kick-ass James Bond. You don't think Henry Cavill uh, Cavill would do it? I think Cavill would. I think he. he I, 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 you know, I think he, he really looks the part. I think he looks uh-huh. great and he would be great. I just, I, uh, I would be curious to see how he would play him because I, uh, from what everything I've seen, I haven't really seen anything James Bond ish about him, but 
I thought his uh, Napoleon solo was really good, but uh, I don't know. I'd be curious. And he's he's actually British. He is he is a Brit. So I forgot the name of the movie that he was in, but there was a movie with him. He was playing a spy, and then he was play, he had to help. He had to work with another spy from a different country, and ah. that basically uh, ah, I need to find the name of that movie. I'll but like it was, uh, yeah, it was a it was a it, it, he did a really good job in it. Uh, he was great as the bad guy in that uh, in that uh, Mission Impossible. Mission Black Impossible. One. Yeah, he was. Like he was. That. That, that was a great Mission Impossible. I thought that was really good. Every time when I think of that one, it's like it's always the bathroom scene when he comes and you're about to fight him and he just kind of cocks his kind of cocks his arms a little bit. Yeah, it's like yeah. boom, boom, like a double barrel shotgun. I'm I like, well, it's like that's how you know. It's like okay, you don't want to mess with that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was. He, he looks he weird was with great. The, yeah, he looks weird with the mustache though. That's yeah, <laughs> yeah he didn't that. look good as a mustache. That was uh, well, he didn't want to look like Superman, but oh, uh, okay. that that was uh, that was a really great fight scene in that bathroom. That was an amazing oh. fight scene. Yeah, uh, you know he would have he would destroy Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is like five five or something, like really short yeah, dude versus really bulk of muscle, like Superman essentially. Yeah. Oh, it's called the Man from Uncle, by the way. Yeah, Man yeah. from Uncle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, I mentioned that Napoleon Solo. That's who he played in that. Napoleon. Oh, that's who he was. Okay. Yeah. My, my mistake. And he All did right. a great job. He really and and he imbued a lot of uh, of uh, of Robert Vaughn. In his performance, I really felt a, a little bit of a Robert Vaughn in there, which was really kind of cool. He was the original Napoleon Solo and the original Man from Uncle on television. Oh, um, see, I didn't see, I didn't even know there was a TV show, to be honest. That's how you guy. Oh, that's how you guy. <laughs> you kids today, I tell you. <laughs> All right. And then, like, uh, uh, I guess, simple question. I mean, I know you've been working with them for a long time, but still, DC or Marvel? Oh, that's that's so tough. That's really tough because you know, uh, I, I actually, you know, you were asking me about uh, you know f- fandom and comic books and all that. You know, as a kid, I would read Batman comic books. I love Batman comic books, and uh, uh, but you know, I have to say, Marvel is just really uh, taking the lead on on these movies. Their their movies are phenomenal. And uh, I would love to see DC, uh, you know, step up and do more stuff like that. Uh, you know, they could do a, a Justice League movie like they did, uh, you know, the Avengers, that kind of thing, and uh, do it with all their characters. I mean, those those characters that DC have, are they're iconic characters. You know, they're just iconic characters. And yeah. there's no reason why they can't, uh, you know, do... I, I love them both, though. It's, it's really hard to choose. I would love I would to see... Say- a, yeah, I, I won't make you choose, but I would say that, like, you know, I mean, like, which would you prefer, like, uh, if between the two, between the two, you know, so you can play You're both give lines. Me in trouble either way, I, I love them both. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> oh um, my god! Oh, I was going to mention something, I already went out of my mind. But anyway, go ahead. What were we gonna oh say? no, I'm just yeah. I mean, like, uh, I loved. Uh, well, like. Uh, I've always been a fan of X Men, so like I can't, yeah, uh, yeah, see? like like diversity. That's why I'm so like waiting until they decide to say, "Hey, we got the rights. We got now. We don't have any reason to not have a a a, a non Brian Singer like direct uh dis uh dis- Disney directed X Men series would be amazing to me. Yeah, that so, would be amazing. Yeah, I would love to see. Uh, I would love to see Marvel versus. Uh, Mortal Kombat, you know. Oh, yeah, that would be would a lot of good characters. That. Yeah, I would love to see that. And uh, there was there was talk at one point, I guess, of them doing something like that. I don't know. Uh, I would love to see that. I hope it happens. You know, that would be very, very cool. I wonder if they're going to have the same kind of stipulation that they did with the DC one, where they were like, you know, when uh, when the Joker, like they did, they were really strict on like fatalities <laughs> for for those for that game. Yeah, I remember. I, you know, they they have to just kind of loosen up a little bit. These guys, I know they have <laughs> that's their job to watch out for that stuff. But you know, it's like the, I think the fans would love it and they go crazy, and it would be a license to print money. Really, I think people would go nuts and just really, really love it. Very much so. And, you know, I didn't even know this, though, too, because I was actually, when I was looking at uh, kind of doing my research, but, like, you were, did you, uh, you did a small role in the X-Men animated movie uh, series back in the nine in the early 90s as, like, a dude named Gladiator or something oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I was Gladiator. That's <laughs> correct, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was like. <laughs> I love Gladiator. Like he, was a, he was really cool. He was actually the, uh, 
he was their version of Superman, essentially, you know? As, and, if, as and, as and if you look at him, he looks a lot like Superman. Just purple. <laughs> yeah, he's got, he's, got a, he's got a mohawk, but he, he's got the, <laughs> the, the uh, you know, the upside, uh, the, the V thing on his, uh, you know, oh, chest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and he's uh, you know he flies and he's all powerful and you know just threw like like I uh, saw the clip I was like oh yeah that's right he did throw Juggernaut into space <laughs> so yeah right. that was uh, that was hilarious that's pretty cool and, and uh, I did I mean, speaking of Juggernaut I did Juggernaut's uh, efforts in the Deadpool movie and I also did Colossus's efforts in the Deadpool in both the one and two so really? I, did I didn't a lot know of that stuff. yeah there's so much stuff that I've done it's crazy we're talking about Batman I met. My wife and I met Bob Kane before what? he passed away. Yeah. And like we had a nice 80s? conversation. Yeah, it was a long time ago, but we, we had a conversation with him. And he said to me, Richard, you know what you need to make it in this business? I said, what? He said, you need to invent a character like Batman. I said, okay, thanks, Bob. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> you know, he's already that's, on that. That's like, great. Bob. Why, why was Bob, like Bob Kane, like didn't like how did he survive the you know like uh, you remember like what happened to charles schultz and all that yeah. stuff it's like he like didn't seem like he that 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 mar- that that uh that he had the same kind of problem with well he was uh, smart with you know character. bob kane was super smart about it i'll tell you he he held on to that thing for dear life and he was smart to do that and so did uh, you know look stan lee did the same thing uh you know the the poor guys who created superman sold it for a ridiculous Pennies. amount of money. I think, I don't even know what it was. It was like nothing like, you know, a yeah. hundred dollars or something ridiculous. Yeah, mm-hmm. And, and they lost that whole franchise and, uh, they, they, you know, they, they could have really made bank on that, but they, uh, you know, they were desperate and they, they gave it up, unfortunately. Uh, but they should have, they should have held on to it. Bob Kane held on to Batman forever. And, uh, and you know he he was rewarded as a result. And look at Stan Lee. Stan Lee built an empire, you know, a huge empire with his characters. You know, it's funny when you hear those guys. You know, they were just they started out just drawing comics. You know, they were just artists drawing comics, and then they did very well for themselves. So see, there's hope for everybody. Keep doing <laughs> what you're doing, and believe in yourself, and keep going. And you too may wind up being uh, super wealthy and doing really well for yourself. Just and then you like who knows you make you're going to be the next big thing you know exactly that's right you never know who they'll know right. life's a crapshoot anyway isn't it <laughs> yeah you know? especially it right is. now it's a crapshoot <laughs> you know I I I've been very fortunate in my life but uh, you know there's a lot of people listen there's a lot of super talented people out there that are struggling you know you just have to have to keep uh, keep on keeping on you know what I mean oh no I definitely understand got to got to do the struggle definitely understand. Yeah. And, uh, like, uh, do you prefer, like, I mean, itself, like, do you prefer doing like a, a role, one role more than the other? It's like, like, like example, like a video game role over maybe a cartoon or anime series, or did you have like a preference that, that you kind of lean towards two more than the others? Well, to be honest with you, um, with very few exceptions, I would prefer doing a, a original animated show or a game just because you get to create a character and you don't have to worry about trying to dub it into, you know, lip sync the character. So you, you get to create a character and, and it's a lot more, you're a lot more free uh, to do what you want to do. Whereas in, in uh, anime, you know, you're, you're dubbing and you're, you're replacing uh, Japanese usually is the language and you're replacing that in, into English. And, and you have to concentrate on doing the lip sync and all that other stuff, whereas you, you don't have those uh, constraints when you're doing the other stuff. So the other stuff is a little more freeing, uh, and I think sometimes you can be a little more creative because it's you creating the character, whereas when you're, when you're dubbing, you're really locked into trying to make it sound like that guy that we're looking at on screen and that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, uh, and also those, those other things pay a lot better than anime. So, uh, but, uh, you know, but as I said, there's two exceptions. I love doing uh, I love doing Jigen in Loop on the Third. I've been doing it for 20 years now, and I also direct a lot of it, and I write a lot of it as well. Uh, the movie that just came out, Loop on the Third, the first, uh, which was a CGI Loop on, which was beautiful. Uh, I wrote uh, the the adaptation for that, and I played Jigen in that, of course. And the other one is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Joseph Joestar. I love that character so much. He was uh, <laughs> one of my favorite characters. And I really enjoyed playing him a lot. 
Oh, see, that's pretty cool, though. But like, uh, yeah, it's funny because like I, when I've talked to p- other uh, other people, they say that all the same thing. Like, I'm actually surprised because I feel like sometimes it seems like you have to work more uh, in, uh, with doing anime uh, anime voiceover than you would for other ones because, like you, you said, do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and but and the, like less. I just don't, yeah, but I don't understand why it does why it pays less. That's that doesn't make sense to me. It's like, is it because it's not union or is it because no, like, no, it is union, but but, the, but 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 you know it's it's been created in such a way that uh that usually uh when when you make a project let's say you 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 make a cartoon series in japan you have that and and you want to you want to get it out to the rest of the world so the best way to do that is to dub your project and uh you know a lot of times uh you've already spent your budget on creating the cartoon show so you don't have a big budget to dub it with and that's why dubbing is is kind of traditionally been uh, not great pay because uh, they see it as kind of the back end of a, a project. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, when they're when they're when a project's done, then they do the dubbing on it. You know, it's not always like that, but occasionally it is. And it, and and thankfully, actually, right now it's it's gotten a lot better. Uh, this year, they passed a new uh, a new rule for uh, you know SAG uh, our our union passed a new rule that that uh, ups the uh, the pay on uh, dub projects. So that uh, you're going to be making, uh, uh, we'll be making better money now. But it's you know it's still not uh, it's still not what the uh, you know the original animation or the uh, the games are. But you know that's okay. This and uh, you know baby steps. You know, <laughs> yeah. but, going somewhere. But, at least it's going in a different direction. So that's yeah. You, you know you have to look at it like a different. Uh, it's a different art form. Basically, is really what it is. And you know the uh, and unfortunately that particular art form doesn't pay great, but. Uh, you know, listen. Uh, I have a lot of fans from doing those shows, so uh, the, it's not lost on me. And the, the the fans love those shows, and they love to come see us at conventions and that sort of thing. And and that's great. And I love all that. So uh, you know, that's that's where you get the the additional pay from, if you ask me, is from that doing is the true. conventions, meeting the fans, and that sort of thing. That's great. Yeah. And uh, like you said earlier, though, uh, about like, you know, one of the roles that you like to do in the anime was was uh, was Jigen, uh, which I was going to bring. I had a specific question for that because I kind of it's kind of irritates me <laughs> because like, okay. like you were you've been doing Jigen for 20 years. Like, I believe you've always been Jigen, right? Like uh, theoretically in the English dubs, correct? No, there, like, there are mean, other people that have done before Jigen. that. Yeah, oh, they're, they're, they're for English. They're, okay, there were yeah, there were other people that did Jigen, uh, not as well as I did it, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that you're not up at that ego right there. <laughs> but uh, like uh, but like, so did you? Were you a part of it in Castle Cagliostro? Was that you uh, or? No, and and supposedly I did uh, I did Goyamon in that, but that, I don't believe that's true. I know that, I know they they kind of credit me for that, but which which would mean I've done Jigen and I've done Zenigata and several uh, of the <laughs> things as well, and I've I've done uh, I would have done Goyamon. So the only two left would be uh, Lupin and Fujiko. So it'd be interesting to hear me doing Fujiko, but uh, Michelle does it so perfectly. No one could do it better than Michelle. So, and no one, honestly, I don't think anybody can do Lupin uh, better than Tony. So, oh, I think yeah. we, I put this cast together. I put this uh-huh. cast together when we did the Red Jacket series. I, I I cast all these guys, and I thought they were fantastic. Now, what's funny was I wasn't supposed to be Jigen because I was directing it, and I didn't want to uh, be a, a member of the cast. I wanted to just concentrate on directing. Well, we went through like about 200 guys audition. I brought in a bunch of guys and the producers never liked any of them. And one day we're just sitting there after all the auditions and they looked at me. They said, Richard, you go in the booth and read it. So I went in the booth and I read it and I came out and they said, we found our Jigen. And at first I I wasn't happy about it because I didn't want to play a character and direct myself. But I'm so glad it happened because he really is truly one of my favorite characters. And I love doing him. And, uh, I, I feel a real kindredship with him and with the series and I love working on it. And I, I'm so happy that I, that I'm Jigen and I love, I love doing him. So, uh, it turned out to be a really, really great thing. Sounds like the producers set you up. They're like, you know what? It's like whatever he picks in, just say, no, just wait. We got to wait to that opportunity. <laughs> to well, they, that may have, they may have. Well, you know, they also didn't like Tony and they kept fighting me with Tony. They, they wanted to get rid of him. And, uh, 
I kept saying, I, I kept saying, no, no, he's, he's perfect. Uh, and they kept saying, no, we don't like him. And we don't think he's right. And anyway, we had him come back. He came back three days in a row and redid the first episode three different ways. And oh, wow. they still didn't like him. And I had to sell him on it. And I, and I finally convinced him. I don't know how I convinced him, but I finally did. I said, you know, the problem is, is that they grew up with the series in Japan and they had that, the, whoever the guy was in Japan who played Lupin, they had his, his voice in their head and they wanted the American to sound the same way. But, you know, the people at that time, when we first did it, it was, uh, uh, no one had seen the show really. No one had really seen Lupin. So I said, this is a perfect fit for this character you know, as an English speaker, I think this is a, this would really work. So anyway, I finally convinced them and I'm so glad I did because honestly, I can't imagine anybody else playing him. And a lot of people say the same thing. And, uh, I just think our cast is stellar. I know there are other casts out there and, and they're all good people. And I don't, you know, listen, I don't begrudge them, but I really feel like our cast is, is the best cast for Lupin the third. I would, I would, I would highly agree. But the, but the little thing I have with it uh, uh, is that, like, I've always wondered, like, like, uh, like the way that they've they recorded these uh, the uh, the Lupins, or like, like you said, you started it in the '90s, but then, it, then was that the red, was that the Red Jacket series? Was that the one that they did for Cartoon Network? Yes. So they did that for a bit, but it feels like they just dis- mix it. They, it just disappears for a bit, a couple of years. Well, and then well, they're it like, did, it this. did. It disappeared for a long time because uh, there wasn't but a lot of content. It was so content. popular. It was well, so popular on Cartoon Network. You know, I know it was. It was super popular. But then what happened, this is a crazy story. This just shows you how crazy this business is. I get a call one day from the studio. He says, hey, uh, you know, I, I, are you interested in directing a project? I said, yeah, what is it? And he says, this cartoon show I just got, um, I, I think it's called Lupin the Third. I'm not really sure. And I said, oh, my God. And, and it was total, it was total, uh, you know, happenstance that it happened. I mean, the, you would think that after I did the Red Jacket series, they would go seek me out, you know. <laughs> but they didn't, and it, it fell in my lap again, kind of by coincidence. And uh, I, uh, you know, I, I said, "Oh my God, this is great!" And I said, "I want to bring back the original cast." And the company that had hired the uh, the studio said, "Oh my God, well they must be ancient now. How old are these guys?" <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so we had to go back, and we had to uh, we had to do uh, voice tests for all the characters to make mm-hmm. sure we still sounded the same. And we did, of course, we sounded the same. So they hired all of us. Uh, we we all passed the test, and then I I directed this with my wife. It was part four. We did it was the Blue Jacket mm-hmm. series. They released that, and it became one of the top shows on Cartoon Network. So then they did <laughs> part five, and now they're doing part six, which we're part of. Uh, and then and then uh, TMS came and approached me and my company. My wife and I have a company called Epcar Entertainment. Uh, to uh, co-direct uh, part one, which had never been dubbed. Oh, so wow. we I just that. finished doing that. Yeah, we just finished that, and that's going to be released next year, or maybe this year. Maybe it'll be released. But this you year. feel so it's just like 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 Lupin, like you're saying, like that just sounds insane. <laughs> like, it to is. me, like it is insane. Because, because like in my opinion, it's just like you say, like you find gold, right? You pick up the first nugget, you're like, Wow, I'm a millionaire. Then you see that there's mounds of it right there, but he decided to like put dirt and just like cover it up and forget about it until you come back again. <laughs> well, that's a good way to put it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, like I, they like, don't there do their, been one, oh, they sorry. don't do their, no, I was just going to say they, the, a lot of these guys, they don't do their homework. You know, they get these projects. They don't know what they are. They don't care. I mean, you know, uh, for example, uh, I was E Hondo in street fighter. Well, the mm-hmm. a new guy came and took the, the, the franchise and he didn't know I was E Hondo and he cast somebody else. Same thing with uh, Gaius Van Balsar. I played that in Final Fantasy fourteen, and then they did mm-hmm. another one, and they hired another guy. And they, I don't know if they didn't know I played that character before, or they had a new crew. Sometimes they hire new studios or new crews, and they come in, and they, they either don't know that you've done this character, or they just want to put their own spin on, on the character or the story, so they want to hire their own guys. But, you know, there's really not a lot of loyalty in this business. So the fact that I got to do... Uh, Lupin again, I was so thrilled. And now, now I feel like we're a lot more cemented in because, uh, you know, we just came back from, uh, uh, the New York, uh, anime, New York, 
and they had a big Lupin panel for us. TMS had it and wanted us to be there. And so we did it. And so now I feel like they realize that, uh, and they, they even told me, this is true. They said, you guys are even more popular than the original Japanese cast. Oh, I bet. So, yeah. I so, mean, uh, you know, so well we, deserved. yeah, thank you. So we, you know, we're, uh, you know, now we're, we're, I think we're a lot more cemented in than we, we were before. <laughs> so, you know, now that we've done, you know, I don't know, four or five series and, and I don't know how many movies there's must have been at least 10, 15 movies we've done and uh, games and all that. So, and I've directed a lot, I've directed and written a lot of the, the, uh, the movies that had never been dubbed too for discotech media. So, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're just doing a lot of Lupin and we love Lupin and, uh, we just, yeah, we're happy to see it, uh, thriving again. I mean, what would you know? I mean, it's not like you've worked on it for almost 20 years on the back end. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, but no, yeah, yeah. No, that's, no, but that's great. I'm just glad, I'm just glad it's back. I watched Lupin the first, the, uh, the CG one, which I was surprised to how good they did the animation without, you know, upgrading you know it's not really like up, it, it, it's upgraded but it's still to its it original still looks, core, it still looks style like them. they still look yeah, like them. exactly it's yeah so it's much much hotter now much hotter. yeah he is it's it's hot jegan now <laughs> so it is. i like that hot jegan yeah it's, it's, be it's better hashtag. than fried jegan i guess right <laughs> that is true all right and uh I, and then there's also something i kind of wanted to confirm with you one more thing uh sure. is it true that no, it's lies, the folks lies. That, Okay. <laughs> the folks of Square Enix like gave you the role of to be the new voice of Ansem. Like they just said, "Who did this?" Okay, give it to him. Like uh, for King- in Kingdom Hearts, like is that well, what really that, happened? That what really? Well, see, you know, as I said, I've done over six hundred roles that I voiced, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that doesn't count all the ones that I've directed and written for. I mean, that's another hundreds and hundreds of of movies and roles and things, but um, uh. The reason I got the part of Ansem was the guy who plays uh, Ansem in Japan does the voice of Bateau and Ghost in the Shell. So the producers, when when uh, Billy Zane wasn't going to return, he did the first one, and when they they needed a they needed Ansem for the next next one, the Japanese uh, cl- uh, uh, clients uh, ask uh, Disney. They said, who does the voice of Bateau in America? And they said, Richard Epcar. They said, okay, hire him. So they hired me and I never, I didn't know anything about the game. I didn't know anything about anything. And they just went in there. Now I've done eight of those games. Yes. Since oh, then. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, so you didn't it, do any kind of, pr- they didn't, they didn't like, okay, let's let did any kind of vetting or nothing. They just like, Hey, he played this dude in another anime series that we probably published. So let's just yeah. let's just do it. That was it. They the the guy that does uh that does Ansem in Japan does the voice of Bateau. I do the voice of Bateau in English. So they said, uh, who does the voice of Bateau? And they said Richard Epcar. So they hired me, and that that's how I got that job. Now I have to say, I can count on one hand the times <laughs> I've got I've been hired without auditioning. So, so that for me, that was, that was really nice. I like that. I'd like to get more of that, to be honest with you. (laughs) So that's, oh, so technically it's pretty much, it is uncommon for that to kind of, that's an awesome, I mean, like, but that's a, that's a great role though. I mean, cause you you definitely fit, filled that role perfectly for your character. I mean, yeah. I mean, and everyone does, everyone loves you for it. So (laughs) so, so it's awesome. Yeah. So like, uh, but I just wanted to know if that was real or not. Cause I was like, there's no way they would have just said, okay, let's just get like, okay, not, not do their homework and just do that. But wow. But now since you kind of gave me a little bit of the inside of how things work with Lupin, now I'm like, okay, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's a miracle, and and we have to remind ourselves that every once in a while, it's it's almost a miracle every time you get a job in this town because it's there's so many things that could happen and so many things that could change. I'm so lucky. I've been I've been doing this for so many years, and uh, I've been working, 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 and like I say, it gets better every year. And uh, I just I, I I think it's great because. Like I say, you see so many people that, you know, even people that have been on television series and stuff like that are fantastic. And then they disappear off the face of the earth. You never see them again. And you're going, what the hell happened to that guy? He was great. So, you know, it's, it, it's just, it's such a roll of the dice sometimes, you know, this business it's, uh, and that's why I tell, you know, I have to tell people, honestly, if you, if you want to get into this business, it's something you want to do you have to realize that uh, there is that element to it that, uh, you know, it's not like you can necessarily, 
uh, work your way up sometimes. Sometimes you can, but sometimes you, you know, you, you work your way up and then you have to start all over again. When I, when I did the uh, supervising for DreamWorks, I told you I was out of the country for a year or two. When I came back, I literally had to start my voiceover career over again because uh, it's like people forget about you and they move on to the next person, you know? Oh my goodness. It's I just know like, it's crazy. It's just, Hey, but you persevered. I mean, like, like I said, I, I really think you're definitely one of the good, one of the icons of it, in Thank my you. opinion. So Thank you. I like, appreciate that. I've grown, yeah, you've grown up to, I've grown up to you in so many different levels. Yeah. <laughs> like, Diagnostics murdered all the way to loop in the third to me and, um, and all these different <laughs> other things in between, you know, so it's, it's a, it's a crazy, you know, and honestly, I, I really love it because I've been uh, able to play so uh, such a variety of characters. There's so many, so many actors that are on TV and they're basically just playing themselves, you know, in every, every show they're on, they just see the same actor and he's just, he's the same guy, but in a different show, you know what I mean? And right, so no. I, I, and listen, there's nothing wrong with that. And those actors are wonderful actors. I'm not capping on anybody. I'm just saying, uh, I'm fortunate enough with the voice stuff that I can just be any, any character I, I can imagine vocally, I can play that character. So for me, that's just, uh, it really makes it uh, interesting and creative for me. Oh my god! Yeah, definitely. All right, one final question, and uh, sure. I do this for everybody. Uh, everyone, oh. like a uh, voice actor, I always, anyone that's a voice actor, I always want to see what, what 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 they choose, and it could be anything. So, like, oh. what is one of the craziest lines that you had to say? And it could be it could be out of context. It could be anything that you like. Oh. And it doesn't have to be like the craziest, but the one that you remember that you said i had to i was like you want me to say what <laughs> you know that kind of thing is there anything in your oh my god like, i'm sure there, there were out? i wish i could oh, think of one though yeah. oh my goodness <laughs> oh my goodness you I know mean, there's it's yeah because it, like we're gonna like uh at the end of the every year at the end of the year we do a montage of it and then we should to, to be like and then uh, kind of do a list uh uh a really cool a uh, fun thing one of my editors does that and uh well, there was, there was a, there was a, I mean, you know, I'm going way, way, way back. We, we do these, uh, what I call chop sake movies when we were first starting out. And they were, they were, um, uh, movies that were, uh, martial arts movies and, uh, they were usually pretty bad and the dialogue was pretty bad. And, uh, uh there was, there was, uh, you know, crazy l- l- lines and a lot of stuff didn't make sense, but there was one line is something like, uh, how, how disrespectful of you to punch me in the spleen. You know, it was like, uh, you know, <laughs> these, these lines that you have to kind of try to deliver and make them sound natural. It was like, it was like just these crazy, uh, I, I wish I could remember more there. We, we made a list of them because they were so ridiculous. We, we, we wrote them down because, you know, there were so many of them that were just hilarious, you know. Oh, how disrespectful. <laughs> how disrespectful of you to oh, hit me in the spleen. I love it. That sounds like a Power Rangers, like an enemy, like just like randomly, <laughs> like boom. It's like that's Power spleen. Rangers. I was, uh, I played 40 different monsters on Power Rangers. I oh voiced my God. 40 different. And I also, uh, I co-directed a lot of the, the shows that they did. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't yeah. even know. Wow, the W of that must have been like free range. <laughs> that was that was pretty nutty, I gotta tell you. Yeah, that was pretty nutty. <laughs> well, they would free- take they would take all the action sequences when the guys were in their suits, and that uh-huh. was all from the original show in Japan. You mm-hmm. know, and then they would overdub it. But uh the other stuff they would shoot, and this is my wife still kicks me for this because they wanted me to direct the live action acting stuff, which I, I wish I had done now. At the time I didn't really I was super busy with uh, my voice stuff and I, and I didn't really, I wasn't really interested in it to be honest with you. Um, but I wish I had done it because I'd probably be directing, uh, you know, on camera television right now. So that would have been a cool thing, but, oh, uh, you oh, know, yeah. I've been very lucky. Like I say, I've, I've done <laughs> so many different things in this business. It's really nuts. Uh, but it's been fun and it's, uh, it's been a, it's been a good ride so far. So I hope it lasts. <laughs> oh well, I, I hope so too. But I'm definitely, I am definitely glad. I hope, yeah, I hope we see you with many, many. Uh, we'll get you up to a thousand roles, and it'll be there like the go. ultimate. Well, there I'm you on go. my way. I'll tell you, I'm definitely <laughs> on my way. Richard Epcar, thank you so much for geeking out with me today. It was, a, it was a pleasure. It was awesome. Is that, that would was you like maybe? Out. 
Yeah. Which yeah. looks more is like it, a prostate exam, I think, than he yeah, but. freeze freeze frame right there <laughs> itself. <laughs> is is there a convention that you're going to be coming coming like is uh, the next oh, convention you're going to be I'm going to? I'm glad you I'm going to Yes, I'm glad you asked that. Actually, we just finished uh uh Anime LA as you know, which was uh, one of our which one of was our most fun uh conventions that we love. Uh, my wife and I, Ellen Stern and I. Um, yeah, let me see what we got coming up. We got, uh, let's see here. I know we've got two in, oh yeah. So we're doing WeebCon, which is in Dallas, Texas. Uh, it's going to be February 4th, 5th, and 6th. Come on out and see us in Dallas, Texas, WeebCon. And then we're doing a, a big, big one that we love. We love these guys. They're super, super nice. And they have a wonderful convention, KatsuCon in Maryland. It's one of the bigger ones. And we're going to be there uh, February 18th, 19th, and 20th. So February 18th through the 20th will be at KatsuCon. And let me see, is there anything else in March coming up? Oh, well, we're supposed to do this uh, uh, King Kong cruise uh, with uh, wow. John John St. John to the Bahamas. But, you know, with COVID and everything, who knows if that's going to happen or not. So we'll see. And that's supposed to be the first week of March. And if that's something that interests you to do, a, we're doing it's basically a convention on a cruise, a cruise ship. Uh, which is uh, going to be a lot of fun. So if that's, that's something interesting. That, yeah, if that's something that sounds like fun, uh, come see it. You can hang out with us, and uh, Ellen will be there. John St. John, myself, and uh, and Wes Johnson, and a couple other people, and Ooh, uh, we're going to nice. have a blast. We're going to have a lot of fun. So those are the conventions. Yeah, it actually might swing by a WeebCon. I, I'm in Texas. I'm in Dallas oh, right now. So. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Wonderful. Yeah. So that would be pretty awesome. To, I love, to, you know, my me. wife, uh, you know, she's really worried about COVID, which we all should be worried about it. But uh, mm -hmm. um, there is a place in Dallas, uh, Bob's. Have you been there? Bob's Steakhouse? Oh, yeah. The, oh, yeah, my the steakhouse? God. Heck yeah. yeah. I love it. And I said, if I ever get back to Dallas, I'm coming to the steakhouse. And then, of course, my wife said, well, you can't go there because it's indoor dining. So unless, <laughs> oh, Bob's, no. has, unless Bob's has put a, a patio out there that I don't know about, we can do that. But. Maybe get Uber Eats with Bob's. <laughs> yeah, that, that might be worth it. Yeah, you know, it's funny. One of my first uh, commercial jobs I did in Texas, it was for, uh, I think it was in Dallas. It was a place called Trail Dust Steakhouse. Do you remember that place? Was that before I your time? I do not know that. Yeah. Okay, so it was probably one. before your time. But I played, uh, uh, what was his name? Um, it, it was a Clint Eastwood character, but he was. Uh, like Dirty Harry? It was like, well, it was like, yeah, I said, I said, go ahead, make my steak. And it was, uh, uh, we call him Clint Mesquitewood. That's what his name was, Clint Mesquitewood. <laughs> Clint Mesquitewood. <laughs> and so I was Clint Mesquitewood in all of these uh, trail dust steak house commercials. <laughs> and they would fly me there and they would have these giant steaks, like 72 ounce steaks. Oh my and, god! Uh, if you if you could eat it, they wouldn't charge it because nobody could finish it. But I I like an idiot finished it. So oh, I, you must have felt terrible the next day. I over. was so full, and then I had to record my uh, my session the next day, and I felt like I needed a wheelbarrow to get there. You know, <laughs> that's but, method uh, acting. <laughs> that was method acting. It was great. But you know, I've done I've done so many you know commercials and shows, and it's just it's been really I've been very very blessed and fortunate. It's been great. It's been like I say, I've been very very happy and uh i just want to keep going so that's what we're doing yeah and yeah that's awesome that's great to hear well guys like i said uh definitely check out richard epcar check out his amazing library uh, watch lupin if you're if you don't know what lupin is you need to go check it out uh, on uh, like like online great yeah. great series and it's historical so but uh, uh and follow uh, Rich, me on uh, instagram please follow me on instagram oh yes and what's your instagram it's Richard Epcar on Instagram. Oh, Richard. <laughs> okay, there it's you easy. Go. Richard Epcar on Instagram. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for listening over thank at you for this. Having uh, me. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, guys, like I said, if you want to listen to more, check out uh, our main website, confreaksgeeks.com, or we will release these out on all podcast services. So we're on Apple, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, everywhere. So, uh, so stay tuned for more awesome, awesome, great content. Awesome. So, guys, this is David signing off. Y'all, take it easy.